Hi, I'm Kat and you're listening to Cat Tales. There are stars and then there are superstars. And my guest today is nothing short of a superstar. Petula Clark is one of the most successful British female recording artists of all time. She established herself as a child performer during the Second World War and went on to achieve major success as a recording artist, clocking up record sales in excess of 68 million. The enormous popularity of her signature song, Downtown, in 1964, led to an incredible international career, a series of consecutive top 40 hits, films and TV specials, including appearances with everyone from Dean Martin and Fred Astaire to Bob Hope and Sammy Davis Jr. Actress, singer, composer, stage performer, television star and more awards and accolades than she can remember, quite simply, Petula is the stuff that legends are made of. This is the one with Petula Clark. Hello, Kat. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, not too bad, actually. It's not a bad day today. It's sort of spring-like. There were primroses peeping up oh, and uh, violets nice. and uh, daffodils and daisies. So spring oh. is on the way. <laughs> we, we need a bit of it, though, don't we? We do indeed, yeah. The first thing I wanted to do was just say thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me because it's, you know... I've I'm just absolutely awestruck with what you've done in your life, to be honest. And oh. and I always research, I know I research everybody, I, of course I know about you, but I'll tell you what I was surprised about was the fact that you have in fact been going for like eight decades. You were a child star. Now, I didn't know that because I've only been aware of you obviously in adult life. So you've done almost this for your entire life, haven't you? Which is incredible. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I, I, I have. Yes, I really haven't done anything else apart from having three children, which is quite an accomplishment, I suppose. <laughs> it, well, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah so the, the, that's my proudest accomplishment, I have to say. Um, uh, yeah, I, you know, I was a very musical child. You know, my mother was Welsh. Uh, therefore, she was very musical. And we used to go, my sister and I used to go to Wales when the Blitz was getting a bit too frantic, you know, we would go yeah. off to Wales, and I loved it, loved it. And um, that's I used to sing all the time. Um, I, I was looked on as someone a, a bit odd because, you know, I would, I'd be singing in the rain, go, going down the street with my coat <laughs> wide open and singing away, you know, uh, just, just totally lost in music. I always have been, and uh, actually, I still am. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that very thing that actually you've from from sort of maintaining a career over eight decades must have been really hard, despite the fact clearly you've you've done many, many different things in your career. You've obviously got a huge amount of talent, but the industry is so fickle, isn't it? How have you managed to maintain it? I don't know. I mean, it's something that I've never really thought about. You know, I've never sort of have sort of sessions of, uh, you know, with my team of people, which I don't have, incidentally, and saying, you know, what do we do next? I, I really uh, have never been very ambitious. Things have just come along. I've either accepted them or I haven't. Sometimes I should have ac- accepted and sometimes I shouldn't have. Um, you know, my it's life is way. like anybody else's life. You know, it's just a, a series of incidents and accidents and... Uh, um, the only sort of thing, the, con- the constant thing is my love of what I do. I, yeah. I, love, <clears throat> I love music. I like, I like my own music, but I like other people's music probably even more. And um, uh, I, I love the contact with, a, with the audience. I think that's what all our, us people in the business are missing the most uh, with all this that's going on at, is, you know, the fact that we can't sort of go out and have that wonderful contact with the audience. That's the best part. Yeah, and it must be torturous. I mean, I've spoken to a lot of people in the same situation, as you know, Petula, and it's like, what do we do? We, we, our life is going out, and mm. it's almost like seeing that reaction is the important thing for them, rather than just the performance, because you can still do that bit, can't you? Well, no, there's nothing quite like getting out on a stage with a a bunch of musicians and some good songs and an audience, and that you can't do in in a virtual performance. You know, that that, that just doesn't work for anybody, actually. Um, Mm. 
and that's what we we all want to get back to. But uh, meanwhile, you know, we have to make the most of our lives. I'm in I'm in Geneva. I was in I was playing the Bird Woman in uh, Mary Poppins in London, I know. and and you know. Uh, Got a knock at the door. I was putting my makeup on. Would you come down to the stage, Miss Clark, please? Which was a bit unusual at that time. Mm. So down I go, and everybody's there, and uh, there's no show tonight. Oh, really? How about tomorrow night? Uh, no. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you mean the rest of the week? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and little by little, it sort of. Uh, it dawned on us that this was going to be, well, I, I thought it was going to be, I, I was really quite pleased. I thought, oh, that's great. I can nip over to see my son in Miami. I haven't seen him for a <laughs> while, and my daughter yeah. in New York, and get a bit of a break, maybe, because this might take a few weeks, you know. Yeah. Uh, and here we are. So I managed to get back to Geneva, uh, which was a, a bit of a hassle, actually, but I did get back, and I've been here ever since. Yeah. And I'm cooking every day, so... <laughs> That's great, though. <laughs> well, I, mm, I'm getting better, let's put it that way. <laughs> practice, <And> then, practice. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, it's, you know, we've all got to find some different way of that, uh, that sort of creative outlet, especially people like yourself who are used to being creative every day. Um, and as you say, you can't really do the performances over Zoom. I know a lot of people are doing sort of like online stuff, but you don't yeah. get that, that interaction, as you say, do you? you so so cookery I mean that's a lovely bit of creativity as well isn't it <laughs> well I didn't look at it that way at all when I first started it you know because I'm I'm really pretty basically hopeless in the kitchen I always you know I always <laughs> have been and uh, and the funny thing is now after a few months I quite enjoy it oh. because I'm, probably because I'm beginning to understand what I'm supposed to be doing you know um <laughs> and uh it's it's actually a moment of creativity. You're quite right. It's uh, and and my husband, you know, doesn't complain too much about it. So I guess it must be getting better. <laughs> you must be doing something right then, must <laughs> you? <about. laughs> so what else have you been doing apart from your cookery? You you have also been carrying on music, obviously, haven't you? Because this is your big love. Um, last year, you you brought out a DVD. I know of. The, the previous performances, but right now you're celebrating a new single that you've actually done in collaboration with the uh, the John Williams. Oh uh, yes, haven't well you? that happened. You know, I've known John for many years, and he produced my last two albums in his lovely little uh, yeah studio. It's like a like a little <laughs> Wendy house at the end of his garden, but it's it's a perfect studio too, and uh, I always enjoyed that. And he he emailed me and said, you know, I'm doing this doing this album, um, his own album, and uh, there's a song here. Which, would you like to join in with it? You know, well, with the wonders of technology, of course you can. And yeah. um, I went into a studio here, just across the road, with David. I think you've spoken to David, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, it's, well, it's his studio, and it's it's, oh, it's, it's right. a wonderful little studio. And uh, I I put my vocal on, and there it is. That's how it happened. You know, it's uh, um, there is also the Albert Hall concert, which is out, which I'm which I quite like actually. I'm, you know, I don't sit around listening to my old records at all. But that 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 is actually quite good because it's it's also recorded live. I think that's what makes it exceptional. Yeah. And that was a that was a nineteen seventy four performance, wasn't it? So yeah, sort of I like mean, turning the clock back. That's yeah. great to have that still, isn't it? Because a lot of things, you know, of of the past, shall we say, just get lost, don't they? And particularly yeah. recordings were like wiped over, weren't they, in the in the good old days of the BBC <laughs> yes, recording there. Yeah, so they, <laughs> they, well, they just got rid of them, you know. They're... They did. I know, isn't it it's sacrilege really? But so that how did that one actually manage to survive? Because that's you know, going back to that era when it really was Binnett's sort of uh, attitude, wasn't it? Well, um, it was put out, um, and then I, I think so David had the idea of maybe just listening to it again and doing some editing. It was, we couldn't re remix it. So that was impossible to remix. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I took out some of the chat, you know, some of that stuff, 
and uh, just kind of polished it up a little bit and did a wonderful presentation of it, you know, sort of it's very well uh, wrapped up and all the rest of it. And it's actually quite interesting. And, and, you know, obviously I sing most of the songs that people would expect me to sing, you know, downtown, etc. cetera. But uh, I, put, I had some stuff specially that I, I wrote specially for it. And uh, the orchestra was absolutely amazing. And, of course, I had my American rhythm section, mm. who are uh, fantastic. And uh, it's really quite good. Um, oh, how so, lovely. So that's been released. And there's a song called Starting All Over Again, which I wrote, uh, I wrote the lyrics for after 9-11, Oh. And I was in such a state emotionally about it. Uh, I really didn't know what to do. I, I, I seemed to be crying a lot. And, <laughs> mm. You know, I did, did everything. I went to church. I did, did everything I could to try and <clears throat> calm myself down. And eventually I wrote this lyric. And uh, it, put, it was put to music. And it's actually a rather beautiful song. And somebody had the idea of putting it out again because it somehow seems to suit this situation again, that we are going to have to more or less start all over again. And uh, we're not quite sure what that's going to be like. Build with compassion and- 
Hi, I'm Petula Clark, and you're listening to Cat's Tales. Oh, yeah, that's really fitting, isn't it? I mean, it's lovely to hear you say that you were inspired, even by a tragic event, to sit down and write something. I mean, that goes back to what you've been saying about music being in you and your life. It's your. Mm. It sounds also a bit like your healing process. It, it is. Uh, for, for me, certainly that was a healing process. I didn't know what to do with my grief and my anger, and uh, so that's what I did. But, you know, I've also been writing here. I've been writing music here. Uh, somebody sent me a, a wonderful French lyric, and I think I've just about finished it now. I, I, I did a, some work on it again this morning. So that's going to be a new song. So... You know, music just seems to be there. You know, it's it's uh, yeah. it, it's you know everything else can fall by the wayside, but the music is still there because it's actually inside me. Yeah, that's it. I was going to ask you about that because, of course, you know, you're known uh, very obviously very much as a superstar singer. Let's put it that way. But you've also done an awful lot of other things, haven't you? You know, you mentioned there about being on the stage in uh, as, as Bird Woman in Mary Poppins before we all had to stop. But mm. so you've done sort of like stage work. You've done television. You've had your own shows, haven't you? You you you're composing music acting it's it's amazing the sort of plethora of things that you get involved in sounds like music's your first love but how does the other things also work in with you do you do you feel compelled to do those in the same way or they've just been fun things to do they've been interesting things to do you know I mean uh, I did the bird woman because uh, Cameron's office asked me to and I First of all, I said, "Why? You know, why? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's like just one song." And I was tempted to to turn it down. You know, I was very close to turning it down. And then I decided to talk to my children about it, and uh, they said, "Oh, yeah, do it." I said, yeah. "Well, why?" He said, "Well, you'll be in London. You'll see your friends." Uh, it's it's we know it's going to be an amazing show, uh, and uh, you'll be working with people you like, uh, and you'll be having lovely meals out in your favourite restaurants. <laughs> and it started to sound, hmm, yeah, quite yeah. attractive to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't I don't live in London, um, and yeah. you know I, I go there as often as I can. But this seemed to be a very good reason for me to be in London, and. Uh, it, it, I was enjoying it very much. Um, it was yeah. a bit strange singing one song, you know. Um, mm. It's, uh, you know, the last time I was in London, I, I was doing a Somerset Boulevard, which was like carrying the whole show, you know. But uh, yeah. it's it's all a different experience. You know, I, I like changing my experience, you know, in doing a show like sunset or whatever is very different to doing my own show you know when mm. i i have a bunch of my own musicians and i sing whatever i want to sing yeah and i can change it whenever i like uh that's a very different experience and it's a really uh eyeball to eyeball with the audience which you can't oh, do yeah. when you're in a a, a book show in yeah. fact you know you have to more or less pretend the audience isn't there yeah, I, I bet you do actually, because it's if I think if you could see them all, I think I'd, I'd suddenly climb up and have stage fright. You know, oh well, so that, that's nothing else. At all. <laughs> um, I I don't suffer from stage fright, but I am nervous before I go on stage. I, I, I actually think that's a very healthy sign. Yeah, 
I think so. Yeah. I think it's got to be, hasn't it? Because it's almost like puts you at your height, doesn't it? It heightens all your senses and that's right. then you, yeah. you do your best performance. Yeah. I think that must be quite difficult, though, going on and just doing that one track, like you've just said there you were as Birdwoman, because you haven't had any time to sort of like warm up for it, have you? Presumably you're warming up on backstage, <laughs> no. but you've got to go on there and do it. No, it's, 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 a, it's a strange experience. And, and uh, uh, I, I was finding it a little difficult at first, um, because I, I was spending far more time in my dressing room than on stage. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you can't just doze off or, or watch television because you have to keep your ears open yeah. waiting, you know, for your cue because mm -hmm. I, I'm going to have to get down to, on stage, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, I knew every line in the show because of that, of course, because I was listening to it every night. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's... A much easier thing to go on and do two and a half hours on stage on your own than to do one song in, in a whacking great show like that. Yeah, I, no, I totally agree with you. I can see that, I can see that. Yeah. Just even from the outside when I haven't done it myself, obviously, yeah. I have to say. <laughs> um, so looking back at your, your career, I mean, is there any sort of highlights that you would say, do you know, I really love that. I mean, the things that stand out are, are obviously the the ones, shall we say, that, that that everybody would think about, you know, the 68 million records that you've sold and downtown comes straight to mind when anybody thinks of you. But if for you, are there any moments that are sort of like the, the not so obvious ones or, or perhaps mm. they are the best ones for you? Well, there, there, there are so many great moments um, <clears throat> and some of them are, 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 are rather sort of unexpected when you meet someone uh, several times in the States, people have come backstage and said, you know, I was a, I was a fighter pilot in Vietnam, Vietnam, and your music, you know, was what helped to keep me going, that kind of thing. You know, that's, that's, that's really kind of extraordinary, you know. Um, it is, isn't it? Humbling. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, and then other things, I don't know, just... Probably one of the happiest moments of my life was when we were making Finian's Rainbow um, because it was just such an amazing mix of people. It was multiracial, of course, which which was great, and, and Fred Astaire, who was so... And, wow. and Francis Ford Coppola. Um, yeah. And we were all having such a great time. Um, we were making the movie on the, the back lot at Warner Brothers. And because we were on the back lot, that's mean we weren't actually in the studio. We did very little of it in the studio. But they built the whole village on the back lot. So we were sort of hidden away from everybody. <laughs> and, and, you know, Jack Warner used to say, you know, of Warner Brothers, you know, from time to town, you know, what's going on back there? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and there was uh, quite a lot of hijinks going on back there. And uh, it was great. Mischief. It was just fun. And uh, I was working with some of the great people, you know, in, in the movie business. And uh, I, I don't know, I, was, I, was, I don't know why I was extremely happy there. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. that was one of the happiest moments. Um, but, you know, the first time I sang downtown was, you know, in the studio in London. Um, I had already heard it. Tony Hatch had played it to me at our apartment in Paris. He played it to me on the piano, but it wasn't finished yet. Yeah. And then when we eventually got into the studio, the first time I heard it with that orchestra, I nearly fell over, you know, um, mm. and I just couldn't wait to get up to the microphone and sing it. So that was that was a very special moment, too. We didn't even realize that we were making um, a monster record. We just knew it was going to be pretty good. That's, that's all. We knew it was going to be okay. Hard. You just don't know which way it's going to go when you do these things, do you? No, really? you don't. You think, actually, I'm loving it. And I think if you get that bit out of it when you're doing it, then in a way it's successful whatever happens, isn't it? That's very true. I mean, it, you know, there are several songs that I've recorded that I thought, wow, this is really great and have meant nothing at all to, to, to an audience, probably because they never got played. But, mm. um, you know, it's, 
you, it's the audience who, who tell you yes or no. You know, that's, yeah. that's the test. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what you're doing it for at the end of the day, isn't yes. it? It's the people that you're performing to. I mean, you've mentioned there about Fred Astaire and, and, and obviously filming with him. But let's look, let's look over your career there. You've actually worked with legends. I mean, it's overused word, to be honest, legend. But you really have all the incredible legends of the 20th century, like Dean Martin, mm -hmm. you mentioned Fred Astaire, Bob Hope, Sammy Davis Jr. I mean, they are names that sort of have defined an era, really, that mm -hmm. sort of gone now haven't it you know it's a different time yes. do you look back at that and think do you know that was quite surreal well the, the the funny thing was you know that most of that was was going on over in the united states and the thing was that that you know i was thinking my god i'm going to be working with so and so and, so. and then we would meet and they would say oh we've been i've been so looking forward to meeting you and working with you you know yeah. I said, wait a minute, that, that, <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. And that yeah. happened over and over again. Um, so, yeah, I was working with legends, but they were looking on me as, as a kind Absolutely. of... Absolutely. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. And, uh, that's oh, something. yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing. It, it's... Yes, it, yeah, but there's a wonderful thing about that camaraderie that happens in in show business, you know, a kind of... If they like you and they admire you, you know, they, they, they can't wait to work with you. You know, it's so uh, yeah. that was happening all the time. That's right. And I was about to say exactly the same thing, Petula. I was going to say, you know, you've, you've walked alongside these people. That word legend also follows you. And it's a strange thing, isn't it? Because like you mentioned there about, oh, I didn't expect them to say, I've been looking forward to you mm. know, performing with you. You know, it's it's lovely. Yeah, I remember I was in a, in a restaurant in L.A. and and uh, as I was leaving, Steve McQueen got up from another table and came over to me. He said, "I love you. I just think you're, you know." I mean, you wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and th there was stuff going on like that all the time, and um, yeah. Yeah. that that made the whole experience very very exciting. I have to say, and unexpected. Yes, it's almost as I said before. It's that like that bygone era where everybody was there at that moment in time, weren't yes. they? And the world somehow brought all those things together. Whether it was America just sort of coming out with Hollywood and yes. you know the, the music scene over here emerging, it all sort of like collided, didn't it, to make yes. this magic? I'm I'm not sure whether that'll ever happen again. Are you? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if it's like that within certain in the community. Uh, I, I I really don't know. I I sort of haven't been part of it for a while. You know, I mean, I mm. I, I work, of course. I'm I, I'm on tour most of the time, and uh, you know, and I'm, I'm recording and writing and all the rest of it. But I don't sort of mix very much, you know. But mm. um, I don't. I'm not sure if people do really mix very much. It's, it's, it doesn't feel like it to be no, honest, in the same feel kind that, of way. No. That, that's what you just, you know, you, I don't know. You look back at those times and think they seem to have a little bit of magic that doesn't yes. seem to exist anymore. It was just something that I feel that came together. Whether it's whether that's true or not, Petula, I don't know. And <laughs> you know, no, but you know, talking about that, it's something that I try to avoid because, you know, I, I don't want to seem like a sort of old fart, you know, because I really, I really am not. I don't. I don't live in the past at all. In fact, I'm, I get criticised a lot. You know, I'm not nostalgic enough. Um, yes. you, you know, it's okay. I, I, I'll, I'll look back at it as if, if I'm talking to someone like you. Uh, mm. I'll talk, but you know, otherwise, I, you know, I don't look back on on, on my life. It's, uh, it, you know, I don't I don't feel that I've done very much actually. I mean. Oh. No. No. Oh, you, oh, I find that lovely. Oh, that's so, you know, like, you know, we talk about being humble. You, that's so no, humbling. I don't think that's it's humble. It's just, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm also, there was a certain moment uh, when I was doing so much uh, and the children were young and, and it, it, was, it, was, it was complicated, you know, and I was mm. whizzing around from one continent to another and, you know, I had the French career going and, uh, and, and, and Italian and German and, all the, and then America happened and it's all a bit of a blur you know I'd, there's an awful lot of it that, that I, I actually don't, don't remember because it's yeah, oh I, I do I, I do and I don't you know it's there but I think 
Oh, yeah, yes, that's true, that happened, you know. But I don't sit around looking at old photographs and listening to old records, and I'm not like that. No. No, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't expect you to either because it's sort of like you, you've you done that bit, haven't you? You want to go yes. on to the next bit that you're looking forward to. It's amazing. And just, you know, you, you say what you've done. Uh, but I think your website is absolutely wonderful in terms of like an, you know, an archive of what you've done. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I do say to all the listeners, please go and have a look and, and, and see what's available to buy, etc. on mm -hmm. Um <laughs> It was fascinating to see it all, all in one place. It must have taken ages to put that together. I mean, have you kept things memorabilia over the years or was it like some painstaking I research? I honestly to do don't it? know. I, 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 don't, I don't have an awful lot to do with it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, for instance, David, he's sort of my assistant and all yeah. that kind of thing. He knows everything. I'm yeah. sure he knows what color knickers I was wearing when I recorded <laughs> Don't Sleep in the Subway. You know, he, there are just, he's just, and there are other people who, who, who are the same. I was watching television the other night. And Helen Reddy, who was who, whom I knew, is I was friend, very friendly with her, and they were doing a whole program with the guy who runs, or was running anyway, her fan club, and he knew absolutely everything about her. You know, he just yeah. it, it was his raison d'être. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> uh, and it, it was rather touching. Uh, uh, yeah. It's wonderful. It's wonderful, isn't it? And, and as you say, I mean, when you're living these things, and you must have been so busy throughout most of your life where it does become a blur doesn't it and you think did I actually do that it's almost like driving somewhere sometimes that's right if you've done yeah. that and you go did I just drive there I don't remember doing yeah, it yeah yes exactly no but the, fortunately David knows everything about my career anyway and and you know if somebody asks me a question I, I just get back to David and, and ask him and he'll, he'll tell me he'll, he'll go finding it <laughs> yeah well, if you ever want to go and fill out the, fill in those blanks, Petula, go onto your website. It's all there. No, dear, I don't think I could say it's going onto my website. <laughs> oh, bless you. Uh, I'll tell you what was really surprising for me. Um, oh, surprising is the wrong word, actually. Uh, but I'm going to talk about your awards because you have won so many awards. I mean, I counted over 60 on there, but I'm, I think there's loads more tucked away somewhere. Mm, maybe. I mean, that's just astounding, isn't it? <laughs> do you sort of look, look back at those and go, yeah, they were the moments that were really good, or do they again just go into this blur of oblivion for you? Mm, well, I didn't realise I'd had, I'd had so <laughs> many. Um, <laughs> I know. No, seriously, <laughs> I, I didn't. Um, uh, I think I've still got the my first one, which was like a silver microphone. Uh, I think it was a BBC award. Um, that must have been way back. Uh, you can check it out if you like. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I do like my little my Grammy Awards because they're rather cute. Um, and they are on display. Oh. Where are they? There's one in the living room as I speak. I think the other one's broken, so we have to get it repaired. Um, you know, I've, I've got a whole bunch of stuff in, in the cellar, but... I, I don't have a room where they're all on display, you know. I, <laughs> I didn't expect you to. No, not really. Although some people do, though, actually. I'm saying that. Some people I, actually I know they do. do that, well, well maybe they've got more space than I have. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're nice. But, you know, I don't know about other people, but I, I don't do stuff to get awards. You know, that's, it's, it's a nice plus. And, you, you know, and my CBE is very nice. Uh, it's in a drawer somewhere with the with my French award um but you know I don't sort of ha have them out on display you know no. no no and what's what's driving you still is that music isn't it and it's really evident to see when you're creating new music all the time which is you know it's, it's wonderful I just think it's wonderful do you find it difficult to come up with those new ideas or do you find that moments like 9-11 just sort of like hit you in the face and mm. go I've got to do something about that Yes, that 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 was a very strong uh, impulse. That's true. Uh, you know, I I don't look on myself as as a songwriter actually. You know, you know, mm. I came to it fairly late, and it 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 was Tony Hatch who encouraged me to to do it. Um, he had been writing 
uh, you know, and I was doing albums one after another, and, and he, he called me one day and he said, listen, I can't think of, we, we need another song, and I haven't got another idea in my head. He said, why don't, why don't you write something? He said, me, write something? He said, yeah, come on, write something. So I wrote the music for You're the One, and uh, he, he and Jackie did the lyric, and it's actually quite a good song, and I thought, oh, that's, I didn't realize I could do that. And then somebody, the, a group called the Vogues recorded it and had a hit with it. And it's the, only really in the last, well, how many years? I don't know. Anything to do with numbers, I don't know. Um, it, it's fairly recently, let's put it that way, that I've become, uh, I have the confidence to go out on stage and sing quite a lot of my own songs. And it's a very different thing to sing something that you've written you know singing something that's written by you know tony or sondheim or whoever you know it's a wonderful thing you to interpret somebody else's songs but when you you've written it it's coming straight from you it's coming yeah. straight from your heart from your mind from your from your soul if you like yeah. and it's a it's a very different experience and i enjoy that and I enjoy writing too, almost as much as singing now. So uh, that's lovely. Yeah, but that surprised you then by the sound of it. If you yes, you it, weren't sort of like inspired initially to write. So to actually come round to the point where you're thinking, do you know what? I enjoy that process now. Yes, that's that's great development, isn't it? Yes, it is great, and, uh, and I'm grateful for Tony, you know, for encouraging yeah. me. But uh, other people have too, you know, and uh, mm. I. I just enjoy doing it. It's something that you can do. I mean, I, I can do that here. You know, I don't need, I don't need anyone around me to, to help me. Like, I, just, yeah. I just do it. Yeah. Uh, finding an idea for a song? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, I don't want to fall into the trap of, uh, you know, writing something, you know, mawkish about the situation. Um, the song that I recorded uh, with uh, the John Williams thing, I think it was fun. I made a bet, rolled the dice, rode my luck and did it twice. I'm in the right zone by the riverside, at the end of the track, the back of the line. I can't touch your skin I want, I want to start, start. I need to win My hair keeps turning Six feet away I feel like running All the way And it's so
Hi, I'm Petula Clark, and you're listening to Cat's Tales. I, you know, I just like doing different things. I, I don't know what's going to come out of me next, so... Yeah, well, I was going to ask that. I mean, where, what's, <laughs> no. what's next? Because you just keep coming up with all these surprising things. <laughs> and uh, I will, where, have you any plans, or is it just follow that journey like you've been doing? Well, you know, I mean, there's you know, the Mary Poppins office to keep in touch with me, you know, because, you know, they are hoping to reopen soon. I mean, I, I don't know how soon. I don't know how they'll do it. Um, and, and and they want me to go back. Um and I have to wait and see how I feel. I, yeah. I, I'm really going to play that by ear. Yeah, I mean, and it's going to be a different. It's going to be different, as you say, isn't it? Really. Yeah. Have you Have you had an injection yet? Have you been inoculated yes. against this? You've yes. had yours. That's great. Yeah, I had both my uh, vaccinations. Yeah. Great. Yes. So you've, at least you're feeling a little bit more sort of protected than uh, than you were before. I, I mean, suppose so. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, yeah. I'm, I still wear a mask and do the social, yeah. you know, the distancing. I think that's that's a smart thing to do. It'll be interesting to see what it's going to be like when we don't have that anymore. You know, it's. it's yeah. I wonder if people will have changed their habits. It'd be interesting to see. It will. It be. It's almost like a social experiment, isn't it? I was it thinking is. the same thing. You know, will we still yeah. keep up that sort of like social distance, or will we all start, you know, going back closer together? Yeah. Will we start hugging again, shaking hands. Yeah. You know, all those things you miss that contact. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's yeah. what, what I miss is you know that coffee shops aren't open. You know, I used to yeah. love go, you know going out to here, going out and walk in the park and go and have a cup of coffee and. That that's kind of sad, you know. It's, it's mm. uh, you know, of course, restaurants. Of course, it's, we miss that too. But it's, funnily enough, it's the coffee shops I miss. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's the little things, isn't it? Mm. It's sort of those sort of like daily things that you used to be able to do that That's are restricted, right. and they're having a big impact on the whole world, aren't they? In terms yeah. of mental health, it's, it's uh, yeah. a sad thing. Definitely. It's a very sad thing. Well, it, but music is there for us all, and that's what uplifts us, doesn't it? So yes. um, we're going to have to say, let's get you get people buying your music again, get them downloading <laughs> it all, <laughs> well, get them going out there buying They music. can, I guess, you know, <laughs> but. Uh, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, you know the whole business has changed anyway so you yeah. know i mean uh, it's there if they want it um you know I'll, I'll go on putting stuff out and if they want to buy it great if they don't yeah. i'll still go on doing it <laughs> and do you hope to do a tour again soon uh, a a tour well i i don't know uh, there's somebody trying to get me to do one and i'm i'm not sure you know with the big orchestra yeah. And you know that's a that's a difficult one to get on the road. You know that's a mm. lot of people, and it's a very expensive item, of course. Yeah. Uh, not many people are, are doing that anymore. You know, it's uh, no. No. you know the difficult. last tours I've done, I've done with five, maybe six musicians, and it sounds fantastic, I have to say, because they they are very good, and we do help it out technically here and there, but yeah. um, I I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I actually love touring. You know, I've spoken to some mm. of my colleagues who say, oh, my God, no, no, tour, you know. Yeah. And I actually love it. Um, I love going out to different, you know, going to different cities and, and, and feeling different vibes. Uh, yeah. Audiences are slightly different in each place. And that, I like that, you know. It's, uh, yeah. That's what yeah. keeps it fresh, you know. Oh, absolutely. Well, let's hope you get back out on the road soon when you want to, in your own time and doing something you really love to do. <laughs> well, you know, people have to want to come and see these. Oh, know. I'm sure they will. I'm sure so, they will. Uh, you know, there is that element too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless you. Oh, but you know, I could speak to you all day, but I know that you're probably very busy and haven't got time to speak to me all day. So but I, it, I enjoyed speaking you to you. It's been lovely. Have a lovely I enjoyed day. It. Okay. Speak soon. You take Bye. Care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Cat Tales. To listen again to this and other tales, go to cattales.co.uk.